Welcome back to Process Dynamics and Control. We're going to discuss control loops and specifically sensors, actuators, and controllers and how those make up control loops. So first of all, we're going to use a cruise control application. Many of you are familiar with automobiles and how they can maintain speed. In this, one, in this case, we're going to say that uh, we want the automobile to maintain 65 miles per hour. Sensor is going to be speedometer. Actuator is going to be the fuel and air to the engine, maybe controlled by a valve or a gas pedal. And then also the controller is the computer in the car that's making those decisions. So let's uh, first of all write our set point, which is 65 miles per hour. And then we're also going to write our speedometer and then our automobile as well. Okay, so we have our gas pedal that's going to be adjusting, being used to adjust the speed. We're going to measure the speed of the car. We're going to compare that to our desired set point of 65 miles per hour, and then have a controller there and uh, that's going to take the action uh, with the gas pedal. Okay, so we have a desired speed and then also a difference. Uh, this signal here is the measured speed, and then we also have the actual speed of our vehicle. So I'm going to open up MATLAB and just with Simulink, just go ahead and type Simulink, open up a new Simulink module here, and then go File, New, Model, and it'll bring up a new model here. I'm going to type in a couple, uh, uh, a constant. First of all, just go ahead and drag that over, rename it set point. I'm going to have a set point of one mile per hour. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit there. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and try, type transfer, drag a transfer function over. This is what we're going to use to model many of our uh, process models and I'm going to rename this automobile. Okay, so now I have a transfer function and I'm also going to put a summation there. Okay, so and then I also have a PID controller. There's my controller and then I also want, um, well let me go back and not a constant, maybe maybe another transfer function for my speedometer there. Okay, so there's my measurement there's my speedometer. I'm just going to flip this. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, the measurement dynamics in there, just change those numbers, and then flip this uh, over so the signals are pointing the other direction. I'm also going to put a scope there uh, to be able to monitor the output of that, connect these signals. You've got to right click to draw that signal off of the, the top right. I'm going to change that to a negative sign and then run it uh, for 10 seconds. And there's the speed of my car. I told it I want to go one mile per hour and it made it up to one mile per hour with a little bit of overshoot. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about control loops for other things as well. We have autopilot for an airplane. We have a sensor, an actuator, and a controller. So our sensor, if we want to maintain a certain elevation, okay, let's say our elevation for this airplane is going to be 33,000 feet. And then we have a sensor, maybe a GPS, that's going to be measuring that elevation. And then we want to have a controller that's going to adjust the position of the plane based on that measurement. Okay, so I'm going to compare it to my set point and then compute a difference between the measured and the mo and the desired value in this case and then have a controller that's going to tell the wings what to do um, and also probably the, the throttle as well to go either move up or down. So let's think about another case. Um, you know, if I'm uh, going to design a temperature controller for a dishwasher, for example. I want to maintain a certain temperature within that dishwasher during this cycle. I have all my plates and cups and things loaded in there. I'm ready to go. And I want to maintain that at um, uh, a certain level. Let's say what our sensor, actuator, and controller are going to be first. Sensor is going to be a thermal couple, something to measure the temperature. The actuator would be a heater that can actually change it. And then the controller might be a, a small chip or something inside the dishwasher that's going to adjust that. So let's say I want 130 degree Fahrenheit water. I have my controller. In this case, it might be a PID controller, uh, proportional integral derivative. And then I have my heating element level that's going to be sent to my dishwasher. Out of that transfer function, I'm going to have the temperature of the water. And then I have a temperature probe of some sort. Um, and there's my control loop. So over time, um, I'm going to desire the temperature to get up to 130 degrees, let's say start, starting from 80 degrees, and that may rise and I want to change, make it uh, stay at 130 degrees actual temperature. Okay, so that's it for this control loop uh, discussion. And um, you know, I just want to make a point that we're going to design a controller. You can be PID or any other controller that can maintain a value, a set point, um, or otherwise optimize to a desired objective function. So that's a, a primer, an intro on control loops, and uh, please visit this website for more info.